Easy now, folks. More and more these days, the type and the amount of power and fuel we're using is becoming a growing concern, right? Whether our household finances are the driving factor or our respect for the longevity and ecology of the planet, we should be all as energy efficient as we're able to be. So I've been thinking recently, how can we save a wee bit of fuel and energy in the aquarium hobby? And I've come up with a few ideas that might help. The three main things I thought of that use power in a fish tank are the heating, the lighting and the filters. So we'll start with the lighting here. These days, we don't tend to use the old T5 and T8 lighting. Everything seems to be moving towards LED. And this is not a discussion about which is better, but the old tube lights do draw on more power. So if we can start replacing these with LEDs, that's a step in the right direction. Whether we regulate our photo period manually or by using timers, I'm wondering if we can shorten the photo period a slight amount. With these analog switches, it's easy just to flick another switch, isn't it? Reduce the amount of time the light is on by a small degree. The nice digital timers we get these days are even better. Some come integrated into the lights and others we add to the wiring like these night crew timers that I use. They definitely give us greater control and the ability to adjust our lighting by smaller increments. The lights generally are on for us. The fish are not going to mind one bit, I promise you that. Your plants, maybe. Reducing the light time down by 10, 15, 20 minutes, will that have a dramatic effect on their growth? I don't know. That's something you'll need to dial in yourself. But saving that small amount of energy every day will add up. The other thing these timers allow us to do is adjust the intensity of the light. Again, I'm wondering, do we really need it at 100% in the middle of the day? Is 90, 80, 70% going to be enough? Just judging it by my eye, I think I can reduce mine down and I'm going to reduce mine down for a little bit and see how my tanks get on. The next thing we consider is heat. And one of the ways of saving heat is not losing heat, isn't it? So I always put my tanks on one of these foam mats. They help to avoid any uh, wee chips that can cause a pressure crack. But I'm guessing they probably save a little bit of heat escaping through the bottom too. Now I'm going to look at adding some polystyrene sheets to the back. You're not going to see it if you've got a painted back or a background on it. However, that is a large surface area that allows the heat to escape. We don't even need to run out and buy big sheets of polystyrene. Lots of times, particularly if you're ordering fish online, the boxes come lined with them. If we keep these by, store them away till we need them, even if they become broken over time, we can cut them down and piece them together and they're still usable, right? So that's what I'm doing here. You can glue them onto the back of the tank if, if you wish, attach them however you think. I'm just going to use a little bit of tape. At the bottom here, where it goes around the side, is where your substrate is going to be, so you're not going to notice that anyway. You may need to leave an inch or two at the top if you've got a lid that kind of hangs over the edge of the tank. But that's another handy place to attach our tape as well. The end result might not be pretty, but you're not going to see it, are you? It's going to be sitting against the wall or the back of a cabinet or whatever. But hopefully it will stop some of the heat penetrating and escaping. As long as it's nice and flush with the edge of the tank, I think we're losing far less heat than we were before. Another thing we might consider, especially if we've got nice tight fitting lids and there's not too much evaporation, is maybe draping a blanket over the tank before we go to bed at night. I know I feel much cosier of an evening when I'm sitting on a sofa watching fish videos on YouTube if I've got a blanket draped over us. Then we come to our equipment. We should absolutely be choosing the equipment that's rated for the aquarium we're using it on and making sure that it's cleaned and maintained. 
a clean filter for argument's sake is going to operate a lot more efficiently than one that is well overdue a bit of servicing equipment that is operating efficiently should also be more energy efficient shouldn't it choosing the right piece of equipment for our aquarium is going to have the same effect as well after all something that is not working efficiently either too hard or overpowered is going to be wasting energy isn't it the last thing i thought on was instead of driving all over town looking for a particular aquarium accessory or fish why not give them a quick call first and see if they've got what you want in stock so they were my ideas for trying to save energy in the hobby if you've got any drop them in the comments below and we'll all try and help save the planet together hey all right i'm out later 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 later